My dear friends and cousins in the Muslim world, I'd like to share a few words from my heart. I know there are people out there who are filled with hatred to the point of behaving barbarically and murdering in the most horrendous way innocent men, women, and children of my people. On October 7th, Shemini Atzeret Simchat Torah, our holiday. I'm not going to go through the graphic details, but anyone that is honest and familiar knows the heart-wrenching and earth-shattering events that took place. I don't know if there's anything I can say to a person that has such hatred, that has such, I would say, even inferior to animalistic behavior. But I do know that there are over 1.8 billion Muslims in the world. And there are those that I personally know that have reached out to me not just apologizing with condolences and comforting words. And I know that there are many that we can and I can communicate with. So if these words can reach any person out there, by all means, but especially those that have some civility and openness And I wish every person in the Muslim community, and for that matter, the Christian community, and the Buddhist community, and all people of the world, would hear these words. We are all children of our great-grandfather, Abraham. Ibrahim. Abraham father of all nations, who lived 3,800 years ago in the land of Israel. And he had a son called Yishmael and a son called Yitzchak, Isaac. So we share one ancestor, Abraham. What would Abraham say right now to each one of us? to you, to me. Be honest. Close your eyes. Give it some thought. What did Abraham represent? What did he pioneer? If he saw this, I sacrificed my life, Abraham would say. I dedicated my blood, sweat, and tears. Everything. I changed my life. I abandoned my home and my pagan family and society to pioneer a path of love, of kindness, of compassion, of virtue, of values. And indeed, the world has changed because this one man, Abraham, was a trailblazer. That's what he taught his children. That each human being is created in the divine image. Each human being. And therefore has the dignity, the divine dignity of what life represents. Anyone that does not honor that is not honoring God and not honoring Abraham and not honoring our own heritage and legacy. So even if you disagree with someone, and even if you consider them a heretic, and decadent, and materialistic, what would Abraham say? Read the chapter in Genesis. The wicked city of Sodom and Gomorrah were cruel people who mistreated everyone. And God said, I will destroy the city. And Abraham, what did he do? He prayed for the infidels. 
He prayed and begged God, don't destroy them. Let's try to find something redeeming. That's what Abraham would say. You're passionate about your faith. You're passionate what God wants in this world. So inspire. Motivate. To destroy, to defile, to desecrate in the worst possible way. This has nothing to do with God, nothing to do with me. So I'd say to my Muslim friends and cousins, what would Abraham say? He would say, we were sent to this world, each one of us, by God. Whatever name you call him, Allah, Hashem, whatever the name may be, the Almighty. He was sent to this world, a materialistic world, a dark world, a world where the divine and godliness is concealed. And you have a mission. Your mission is to bring light to this world, to illuminate it, not to make it darker, not to make it more hostile and to more violent, but to bring light, turn it into a divine garden. And yes, there are many of you. Each of you have your path and your way. Find a way to help uncover and unleash the power of the soul. That's what Abraham would say. How we got here. What can I say? Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden began to wander and people wandered off. But to this point, so why do not you and I and each one of us rise? The headline should be that the Muslim world has risen to live up to the legacy of their great-grandfather Abraham and to demonstrate the most passionate and powerful love. And yes, to eradicate anyone that is opposing that through a death culture, through killing There's no justification, even if you totally disagree. But these are children of God. Pray for them. Redeem them. And I'm proud to say, I've never been prouder to be Jewish, to be a a grandson of Abraham. Now is the time to rise to the occasion. Because events like this crystallize what we stand for. And this is, your, this is your opportunity, I say to you, from my heart, to choose the path of life, as the Bible says. I've given you two paths, the, life of, the path of life and the path of death, the path of blessing and the path of curse. And choose the path of life, life that comes from God and from a meaningful life and a purposeful life of transforming this world into a divine home and a divine garden to a holy world, a sanctified world. That's the revolution that should be coming from the Muslim world, from the Jewish world, from the Christian world, from all of us. But especially I say this to the Muslim world because this is really the defining event. And I can assure you that You take this approach, choose life, choose love, choose God. You'll have partners in each one of us. And together, each in our diverse way, we'll find that harmony within diversity. I'm not naive. I understand there's real challenges ahead. But whatever the challenge is, Abraham, our great-grandfather, anticipated and gave us the resources and the strengths and the very DNA to live up to be the children that Abraham wanted. I would love to hear your response, feedback, comments, and share this with others. Let this resound in a ripple butterfly effect from person to person in every part of the universe, but especially in ground zero the Holy Land, the Promised Land, in the Middle East, all the surrounding countries, go back to the beginnings of civilization. 
let us create a world where Abraham could say, ah, I'm proud of my children. 